If you want your podcast audio to sound richer, warmer, and more professional, then this video is for you. I'm gonna go through the three tools that you need and how to use them to make your podcast sound much better. And whatever your budget or experience, I'm gonna show you how to do this simply. So if you haven't seen the first two parts of this series and your recording sounds reverby or echoey and noisy, then have a look at those first because it's best to get rid of the noise and reverb before we do this process. In this process, we're just gonna be enhancing the tonal quality of the audio to make it sound professional and just more appealing to the ear. I'm using Reaper for this, but you can use any digital audio workstation. If you don't have one already, then you can grab Reaper from reaper.fm, get 60 days for free. You can also use Audacity, which is another free digital audio workstation. I'll leave links in the description below for tutorials about how to get started with those in case you're, you're not familiar with any digital audio workstations. Once you're familiar, or if you already have a, a, a door of choice, then we're gonna go straight into this mixing side of it. So I've got two recordings here. This is the first one. Casts that allow the host's character to shine through are the ones that grow the fastest. So it's recording that I made for my podcast. It sounds nice and clean. And then we've got another one here. Well, as a frequent listener of your show, like I mentioned before we hit record, I, you keep me... Again, it sounds pretty good, um, but it's a little bit boxy and we can actually make these both of these sound better. But this can apply to any recording. Um, these are the three tools that I recommend that you use on any podcast vocal recording. So let's start with the first one. The first tool we need is an EQ. So if you find the track in your door for that, particular piece of audio and then in Reaper we've got the re-EQ but any EQ will do. Let's have a listen to that on loop. Does the content you create for your podcast have character? I've seen time and time again. So there are four things that we want to do to this. The first one is we want to add a high pass filter. A high pass filter is a filter that allows the high frequencies to pass through basically. So it's getting rid of the very low frequencies. So we just wanna cut out the frequencies below around 70 to 80 Hertz. This is kind of low rumble that most people aren't gonna be able to hear anyway, and it can just sound, make your mixes sound muddy, especially if you've got music or anything else in the background. So that's the first one, nice and easy. We're gonna play just so we know where we are. Does the content you create for your podcast have character? I've seen time and time again that the podcasts that allow the host's character to shine through are the ones. If you've got a subwoofer, not just regular speakers, then you might be able to hear the difference. But the second one is a little bit more obvious. We're gonna add a little bit of bass. So we can use a bandpass filter and add around 6 dB of low end, around 100, 150, and it's just gonna make it sound a little bit more warmer and pleasant to the ear. So let's have a listen to both of those now. Does the content you create for your podcast have character? I've seen time and time again that the podcasts that allow the host's character to shine through are the ones that grow the fastest. So it's just got a little bit more warmth. We can even go higher depending on how thin or you know, lack of bass the original recording has. Does the content you create for your podcast have character? I've seen time and time again that the podcasts that allow the host's character to shine through are the ones that's so just got a bit more warmth there. Then the third tweak we're gonna make with the EQ is we're gonna be removing some of the low mids. Now this is the kind of boxy section. If you've got a very reverby recording, it can actually remove or reduce some of the sound of the reverb if you do this. But generally, it just, it can sound kind of unpleasant and not so professional. So around three to 400 hertz, we're gonna again remove about six dB. So let's listen with and without that one. I've seen time and time again that the podcasts that allow the host's character to shine through are the ones that grow the fastest and have the most loyal follow. Again, it just sounds a little bit more warm and professional. And then the third one, sorry, the fourth one, we're just gonna add a little bit of high end. If you've got a, a speaker that you've recorded who already has uh, quite a high pitched voice or a lot of sort of, a lot of quite harsh S sounds, it might be the microphone they recorded with and you might not need to do this. But for, for my voice, I like to add around 3 dB 
around sort of five to six K. Let's have a listen. Content you create for your podcast have character. I've seen time and time again. So you can hear when we're moving this. Allow the host's character to shine through are the ones that grow the fastest and have the most loyal follow. It just helps brighten it up a little bit. Let's turn that third one back on. So let's now have a listen to the whole thing. Does the content you create for your podcast have character? Does the content you create for your podcast have character? So it just makes it sound a little bit nicer and warmer with those few tweaks. And then just taking a look at another quick example, this piece of audio sounds slightly different. So we're going to start with the same preset, but just make a couple of tweaks. Let's have a quick listen. Yeah, there's some there's some um, pauses that have happened in some of the shows just due to content or uh, change of focus. The podcast are still live, active. So there's a little bit more mid-range, a little bit less low end. You can hear a little bit of noise there as well. It has been reduced, um, but there is still a little bit present while he's speaking. But we're just focusing on the EQ. So let's bring that up and enable that high pass filter again to cut out that sub bass and then add a band pass so we can boost that bass a little bit. Yeah, there's some there's some um, pauses that have happened in some of the shows just due to content or... So you can move this around a little bit, generally around 100, 125 is around where you get that, that richness. And there's quite a lot of that mid-range, that kind of boxy uh, mid-range. So again, whichever compressor, uh, sorry, whichever EQ you're gonna be using, whether that's on Audacity and, you, and you're using the filter curve, uh, plug in or if you're using garage band whatever it's going to be the same so let's have a listen you can actually boost it first and hear for the sound that you don't like yeah there's some there's some um pauses that have happened in some of the shows just due to content or bring it down a uh, change of focus and then finally we're just going to add a little bit of brightness at the top around five to six kilohertz yeah there's some there's some um pauses that have happened in some of the shows just due to content or uh, change of focus. The podcast is still live, active. We do like throw up a couple. And you you might also notice that I've reduced the output here by two. So this is reduced when the EQ is active, the level, the gain, the volume, whatever you want to call it, is being reduced by two decibels. This is because these boosts that I've added have actually increased the overall volume or the perceived loudness. And when something's louder, it generally sounds better to us. And I don't want that to be affecting our mix, affecting our perception of what it sounds like. So just re reducing that volume after um, so that when we A, B it, when we listen to the before and after, we're only hearing those tonal changes. Uh, change of focus. The podcast is still live, active. We do like throw up a couple episodes here and there to keep the feed. Uh, change of focus. The podcast is still live, active. We do like throw up a couple episodes here and there to keep the feed. So I hope you can hear that it's just a little bit more warm uh, and a little bit more pleasant to listen to. Obviously, there is some sub subjectivity to it. So if you if it's your podcast and you like a kind of brighter mix, then then you could add a little bit more of the top end. But generally, this kind of scooped sound, as as they call it, with the slight boost, uh, the, the bassier sound, the slight boost in the top end, and then the mid range taken out, is generally. Um, appealing to most ears and, and what you'd expect in a professional sort of broadcast setting. And now we're going to take a look at the next tool we'll be using, which is the compressor. By the way, if you want to learn more about the podcast production process so you can edit, mix and master amazing sounding podcast episodes, then grab the free podcast production process cheat sheet at claracast.com forward slash PPP. I'll leave a link in the description. It goes over the setup, the editing, mixing and everything else that you need to know to make your podcast productions the best that they can be. So find whichever compressor comes with your digital audio workstation. You can use this recomp. And what a compressor does, it balances the volume or the level across the whole track. So it's going to squash down those louder sounds or the louder words without affecting the quieter words just to have a nice, more e even balance across the whole thing. So if someone laughs, for example, it won't be super loud in your listener's eardrums. So let's find an area where I'm speaking a bit louder and a bit quieter. You want to attract loyal listeners to your show and make it stand out, you inject more character into your podcast. So you can hear there that this is very quiet and this is very loud. We want to balance those out without having to change the volume of everything 
individually using editing. So with this compressor, we want to find a threshold where it's going to start kicking in. So we want the quieter bits you inject more character into your to be podcast. under the threshold there, and the louder bits. We want to attract loyal to be over the threshold. So if we put that around here, we want to attract loyal listeners to your show and make it stand out from the crowd. And then you can see this red bar. Your compressor compressor should have a similar thing where it shows you how much gain is being reduced. If you want to attract loyal listeners to your show and make it stand out from the crowd, you can see that gain reduction there and hear it compared with this quieter section. You inject more character into your podcast. Where it's not doing anything. Now, if you want to get a little bit more technical with this, you can increase or decrease the ratio. And the ratio is about how much it's going to be decreasing it by. So around 4 dB is good if you have a very kind of varying recording in terms of volume, then you can go a little bit higher, maybe 6 dB. Then the knee makes for a smoother reduction and then the attack and release. The attack is how quickly the compressor kicks in once the audio does go over that threshold. And then the release is how quickly it stops compressing the, the sound once it goes back below the threshold. Now, don't worry too much about this. The, best, the most important thing is that you just get a good understanding of what a compressor does and, and just make sure that you can set that threshold correctly because that's going to have the biggest effect. So let's have a listen to it in comparison. Today to help you inject more character into your podcast and much more. If you want to attract loyal listeners to your show today to help you inject more character into your podcast and much more. If you want to attract loyal listeners to your show and make it stand out from the crowd. So it's just not quite so harsh when that louder dialogue comes in. And then finally, the third tool that we're going to be using is a de -esser. So what a de does, it reduces the high frequencies once they go over a certain threshold. So for example, if you've got somebody who on their recording, it sounds really harsh when they say a word with S in it because of the sibilance that that causes you can use the de to kind of tame those frequencies so it's less harsh for the listener. Again, if you had the, if you were in that situation, you probably wouldn't be increasing the high frequency back when we EQ'd, but the beauty of the de is that it only affects those harsh, sibilant words. So if we find a section where that is the case. If you want to attract loyal listeners to your show and make... So listeners there. Let's have a listen. want to attract loyal listeners to your show... And so the first thing we want to do is make sure that the threshold is set so it's actually catching those S's. I'm going to bring this right down to start with because it's quite a quiet recording. And you want to see that gain reduction only when the, those sibilant S's come in. If you want to attract loyal listeners to your show and make it stand out from the crowd. Yeah. So you can hear where I say stand out or listeners, you see that gain reduction. If you want to attract loyal listeners to your show and make it stand out from the crowd. And again, you can adjust the ratio how much you want to reduce this by. If you go too hard on it, it can start to sound a little bit like the speaker has a lisp. So you've got to be careful, but let's have a listen to the difference that makes. To your show and loyal listeners to your show and make it stand out from the crowd. Loyal listeners to your show and make it stand out from the crowd. So it just sounds a little bit more harsh. And again, some of your recordings are going to need this more than others. If your digital audio workstation doesn't have a de then you can just reduce the high-end frequencies and it will have the same effect. The only difference is that it will affect the recording as a whole rather than just those sibilant sounds. So ideally, uh, an, a de is the best in that situation. I hope this has helped you to improve the sound quality of your audio. Hit subscribe for the next in the series where we're going to be going over how to remove clicks from your podcast vocals and for more podcasting tips and tutorials. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.